Congressman of the Southeast District of the United Methodist Church, and I'll use her education. Good evening. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this first Monday in December. We thank you for all the work that has been accomplished in this past year and all that lies ahead of us. We lift up tonight the concerns and opportunities of this city, its citizens, and all those who pass through. We pray you guide us in this meeting that we might carefully consider the matters that come before this council. And Lord, we give you thanks for those who are our first responders and who are ready at a moment's notice to care for those in need. We pray you bless our city staff as they work through this holiday season. Keep them warm and safe, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. There is a uh, presentation listed on your agenda tonight, but that will actually be our second meeting in December on the 16th. So we really have no presentations this evening. We'll go right into communications. Anybody have anything? Mayor, I'm sure you're going to talk about it, but I had the opportunity to go to uh, Mark Bliss's uh, retirement ceremony, and it was a, a, a fine event, and it was uh, great to see, uh, see a lot of uh, old faces and new faces and hear a lot of good old stories. It was, it was, it was fun. Uh, it was good to say goodbye to him. It was good looking at some of the uh, old pictures. Yeah, and hearing some of the stories about his columns, I forgot about his Mark My Words and the stories that he did about his, his daughters up until about junior high. Yeah. They, uh, they uh, didn't want any part of that. <laughs> so, so anyway, it was really good. And, 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 and uh, we're going to, well, I know we'll always, I know we all um, I just wanted to say thanks to the city staff and everybody for whoever has been involved in all, all of these different holiday events that have been going on, the Christmas tree lighting, the parade of lights last night. I know a Sunday evening event like that sometimes isn't always everybody's first choice, but man, to see those kids having fun and see parents and families out there, it's just as good as you can ask for in a community. Uh, see really a lot of people coming out for for those specialty events so if it's police and fire and public works and everybody that's involved just thank you guys because man uh you see the smile on people's faces and it's really it's worthwhile it is the holiday season is upon us anybody else down here it's quiet tonight uh the uh cape community area foundation at a uh, ribbon cutting ceremony last Tuesday, and they represent Cape Jackson, Scott City, and are really kind of a uh, they support several local charities and local nonprofits. And uh, they were doing that for two reasons one, for the ribbon cutting, and second, because tomorrow, December 3rd, the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving, is National Giving Day. And they just wanted to uh, reiterate that. And I would like also, so think about tomorrow, and uh, in the spirit of the holidays, give something to your local charity or a local nonprofit that you're interested in, and because uh, it comes from your heart. So remember Giving Tuesday, which is tomorrow. Uh, he already mentioned the tree lighting and whatnot. Uh, First Friday coffee is next, this next Friday. Uh, and again, I think uh, representatives from some nonprofits are going to be there and have a program. Uh, I also think that uh, the new owners of uh, the Century Casino will be there that day. Uh, that uh, vote is Wednesday and goes into effect Friday morning, so the ownership will change as of Friday morning. Uh, that, that goes as planned. Uh, Congratulations to CMO for another good football season. They hosted the playoff game, which was good for the community. And uh, being from Cape, uh, having kids that have gone to Cape Central, I still have a lot of friends and whatnot that are in Jackson. And 
kudos to them for paying for the state championship this next weekend. That's a big deal for them. I even heard that they rescheduled their Christmas parade, which was going to be Saturday at 5 to Sunday. Nobody would have been in <laughs> Because part of the town will be at the state championship game in Columbia, and they will honor the football team, win or lose, on Sunday at that parade. So it's a big thing for that community, and, and uh, kudos to them. Uh, I want to reiterate again, we've talked about, Scott and I have talked about, and uh, uh, some of you have talked about having uh, some sort of a Cape Legislative Day uh, in January or early February, uh, where we from Cape will go to Jeff City and lobby on behalf of our city. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want you to just kind of think about that. And, and Scott and yes. staff can get some possible dates and we can look and see who can go up and come back that day. Uh, so just kind of keep that on your mind. And I really don't have anything else, Scott. Uh, just mentioned the uh, Simo Girls Volleyball is going to be playing right. in Kentucky. That's right. Um, the NCAA tournament as well. well. So uh, things are going well. And, uh, exciting to uh, watch the success of, of them and um, I don't. I assume it's on ESPN something. <laughs> the Ocho. The Ocho. ESPN Plus, probably. Yeah. yeah. That's all I have. That's all you have. All right. Anybody here this evening to speak about something that's not on the agenda this evening? My name is Ethan Kronzel. I'm a resident of Cape Charter Island Ward 4. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you this evening. Uh, during the Council meeting on November 18th, Bill number 19-185 was introduced, which would ban parking on Normal Avenue from Henderson to Pacific. Uh, during that same meeting, some of my fellow students appeared in support of this bill, citing observations they made over a one-hour duration. Additional discussions have included ticketing procedure, safety concerns for individuals with, viv with visual impairments, and alternative solutions to an outright ban of parking. Uh, in order to learn more about this issue uh, and hear additional opinions, this item was tabled. Uh, and so in that spirit, uh, I'd like to demonstrate my opposition to this item. Uh, parking on campus is already an issue that most are familiar with. Uh, while this parking ban may provide a solution to other problems, it would only further the issue of inadequate campus parking. Uh, to my knowledge, no proposal has been made that addressed where cars that currently park on normal would move to. The issue of cars being parked illegally has been discussed uh, as creating a safety hazard not just for students with disabilities, but also students who may be crossing the road while looking at their cell phone. Uh, regarding the problem of students looking, <laughs> looking at their cell phone, while crossing the street, although this may be a hazard for the pedestrian, it's one that I'm much less sympathetic towards. Uh, if a college student has not yet learned to look before crossing the street, then that is an issue of an individual with no regard for their surroundings, and so much should probably take some individual responsibility there. Uh, vehicles that are parked illegally, thus making it difficult to see before crossing the road, are not the result of rebellious students with no respect for the law but rather a symptom of the larger issue that is inadequate parking for students, faculty, and staff of SEMO. And to my knowledge, both KPD and DPS both have the authority to write tickets for cars that are illegally parked. Uh, I believe this is a matter of enforcement of the law. A law is only as effective as, it is, as its enforcement. Uh, eliminating the opportunity to violate the law by enacting a ban only causes an inconvenience to those who follow the law. Uh, I believe alternative solutions can fix this issue. First and foremost, adequate parking needs to be provided to students, particularly those who spend hundreds of dollars for permits. Additionally, legal and illegal uh, parking spots can be more clearly marked. Speed bumps and stop signs can be placed to slow fast-moving vehicles. Finally, electronic crossing devices can be installed to assist pedestrians. Again, though, this will require adequate enforcement to be effective. Uh, a parking ban will only relocate this issue, not cure it. Uh, and one final thing is I saw today a, a quote from MLK, I think it was Providential, and it said, uh, justice anywhere threatens justice everywhere. And I thought to myself before I came here, do I, is this really something that I want to complain about? Because it seems so small, but in, in the end it really is systemic of a bigger issue. 
So uh, thank you for your time. I will say this item uh, was tabled by the council uh, for a number of reasons. One, because there were a lot of residents that live in that area that that, uh, that weren't contacted about this before. And uh, I think that's going to occur. Uh, originally, the idea was to maybe do this and, and uh, get it done before the holiday so that any change could be made before the next semester, but that's not going to happen, and the university knows that. They are also doing their own studies about uh, <coughs> all sorts of other things that would happen if it were closed uh, for some reason like emergency vehicles, deliveries, and there's just no access to anywhere up in there without that. So there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes to address that and look at the options. So it's still being studied. Anybody else? Yeah, my name is Kayla Potek, and I'm in support of the parking ban, and I have a lot of remarks that my opponent had a lot of really good points, but I can make a counter argumentative points against what he had to say. That it is really good that uh, people with disabilities and others, like parking needs to be remedied on Normal Avenue because right now it is problematic with cars parking illegally. And what he said, like placing barriers by the crosswalks or having DPS patrol or KPD like that's a lot of really good positive points to like instead of having the ban have those resources available and it would be really good if SEMO Department of Public Safety was allowed to patrol and ticket on Normal Avenue which I know I think they're working on that which hopefully that can happen sooner instead of something else that would take more time to put in place like installing barriers or audible pedestrian signals for students like me with a disability that rely on auditory cues for safety that would be beneficial instead of illegally parked cars that block the crosswalk so i'm really hoping that the ban does go through and it gets passed because that would be beneficial to pedestrians and students with disabilities and Normal Avenue is a really heavy street that is frequent foot traffic and cars and it's a really busy street from North Henderson to Pacific is the area that is mostly used by SEMO students and traffic and it's a really busy area that cars don't need to be illegally parked they, they need to find another area and a student had talked about turning the parking lot across from Vandiver Hall in the University Center. He had talked about making that into a multi-level parking garage, which would be a good solution for, instead of the parking ban, they could have a parking garage in that area, and that would be a good compromise for students like him that don't want the ban on parking. They could have a different area on campus to park instead of having normal avenue be a no parking area that would be a good alternative having that multi-level parking garage built even though there is the issue of finances that's a good alternative for students that are against the ban all right thank you okay. hi um my name is eric bone i was here last meeting uh talking about parking um, so our group met and we came up with some solutions that could um, go into effect for the street. Um, we're neutral on the fact of just banging the street, um, but one of the solutions we came up with would be to add painted parking lines to the side of normal. Um, that way, you know, both people are trying to park there and uh, we'll be able to know where they can't park, where they can't park. That way it will be clearly marked. Um, and then off of that, you could add um, parking meters, or I know those are kind of getting outdated. Maybe like the electronic ones that they have. Um, I know they have them down in Florida everywhere. Um, that would create, could create a little bit of additional revenue for the city. Um, <coughs> and then 
our final suggestion was for DPS and the city of Cape Girardeau to work out an agreement, like an official agreement between the two of them on who's going to police the street. Um, I did hear some things today about them working together, which is a good thing to hear. Um, that's all I have to say. All right, thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Stafford Moore. Um, honor to the mayor, Jim Fox, uh, the uh, city manager, Scott Myers, and all the council men and women. Um, I'm representing uh, the community uh, surrounding the situation with the uh, aquatic center. Um, <clears throat> so my name is again Stafford Moore Jr. I'm standing in representation as a voice for many concerned citizens of our community. Our aim is to address a few issues concerning the indoor aquatic center and the new plan that was presented in the Southeast Missouri on October the 2nd, 2019. Our goal here this evening is to stress the importance of prioritizing the indoor aquatic center at the Jefferson School location. Focusing the full 10 million or as much as possible to that building or that facility. On January the 8th, 2019, you guys, the city council, unanimously voted to support the school district, never wavering plan to prioritize building an indoor aquatic center at Jefferson Elementary. And because of that vote, it is of our belief that the city in collaboration with the school district to build the best indoor aquatic center possible at the Jefferson location, utilizing again the full 10 million at this location, even if that means building a pool smaller than 50 meters. Um, after Prop Y passed on April the 3rd, 2019, the city council and school board empowered an ad hoc committee to iron out details for a new aquatic center, but as stated by the former mayor, Jay Newsom, I'm saying that right, in an uh, article in the Missouri, and I quote, location will not be an issue. The decision has already been made. The Cape Girardeau City Council and the school board have agreed the aquatic center will be built adjacent to Jefferson Elementary School, end quote. In view of this, we again feel it is important to stress the priority should be to build the best possible aquatic center at the Jefferson School location. This means we should not build a smaller facility to accommodate other entrants. We reject the proposal for a smaller pool without adequate multi-purpose rooms for rental use and programmable space for water aerobics. The city council residents feel misled because we were told we had to replace the municipal pool, but now it has been said that replace somehow means it can be fixed. Although we respect the findings of the ad hoc committee and recognize the validity of issues they raised, the fact is, it is still unknown if we can rebuild a municipal pool for $6 million. It is also physically or financially irresponsible to start a job you do not have enough money or any proof that you can finish. It also seems to be a bad business decision to build what the consultant said was the more cost-effective pool, smaller, which also strengthens the need to prioritize the Jefferson location. Why build a smaller aquatic center when the location, infrastructure, and other amenities are already available at Jefferson School or are in development? We also want to bring attention to the fact and hope that you recognize that the ad hoc committee was never organized to discuss location, but rather was charged with identifying findings about cost estimates and design details. As such, a suggestion that the money be used on two pools is just that, a suggestion. You are the deciding maker, decision-making body and are free to reject their finding. But even if you build two pools with 10 million, you should put the financial emphasis, 6 million minimum, on the Jefferson Elementary Aquatic Center in order to keep your promise to the community to honor the pledge you made to the school district and the citizens of Cajarada who voted with their, who through their vote overwhelmingly approved it. With the unanimous vote from you guys, the city council, Overwhelming support of the citizens of Cajarado, we believe the course of action should surrounding the indoor aquatic center should be to prioritize the Jefferson location, making it the best it could possibly be, possibly be with the full 10 million, the 6 million pledged from the city, and the 4 million from the school district. This is what the citizens of Cajarado voted for. Thank you. Thank you. You don't know at all? 
I second that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Pastor Bird, and some of the local pastors, uh, we agree with the statement that I just read. And we ask that you strongly consider the arguments that we made and present to you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else I'd like to speak to any item that's not on the agenda? I like that sweater. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Mr. Mayor, let's just make a comment back on the uh, on the parking, uh, SEMO parking. In, in, indeed, the uh, SEMO DPS does have the authority to write tickets on city streets. Um, it's not been there probably in the past, but uh, after the meeting that we had, they did come to the police department and have gotten uh, our devices so that they can uh, patrol that section of normal um, and, and do some. Somebody mentioned the need for additional enforcement, and they'll be doing that in, in the upcoming weeks and months. So I just want to make, make that clear. There was cooperation, and they are against the authority. That in itself should stop a lot of illegal parking. Just, so instead of having how many parking places are on normal, 40 something? Mm -hmm. 48, 48, something like that. Yeah. Uh, usually there's 60 or 70 cars parked there, yeah. so that's going to alleviate a lot of the issues you have with crosswalks. But anyway, we'll see. They're studying it and we'll go from there. Nothing else? We will go into the agenda review. Because we have uh, two public meetings tonight, the first public uh, meeting will uh, uh, consider a request for a special use permit for the purpose of constructing an electrical power distribution substation, a typical substation, 1400 West Cape Rock uh, Drive. I see there's some folks here to discuss that tonight, because we'll be hearing from that. Uh, it's going to be planning and zoning, planning and zoning recommended uh, approval, and so that will be considered in the first public hearing. The second public hearing is to rezone property at 1205 South Mount Albert Road. Uh, intersection of Mount Auburn and, um, and uh, King's Highway. Um, um, I provide the radio station anyway. This is uh, a um, <clears throat> rezoning from M1.4. Um, I believe what's being contemplated there is a, um, a long term care facility. Um, but of course, that's not really what's being considered in the rezoning. So. Um, that would be uh, our second public hearing tonight. Both of those, first reading of both of those uh, uh, items uh, are on your agenda, uh, items 15 and 16. Our consent agenda tonight uh, is the second third reading of the uh, agreement to have the county collect taxes as they have in the past. Um, five, six, seven, and eight are um, record plats. Uh, second third reading of those from last time. And then number nine is a proposal from the region's capital advantage uh, for special obligation bonds. Uh, we've discussed this a few times, and uh, the latest uh, uh, offer sheet is uh, at your places and will be posted on the website. Uh, the final term sheet uh, is in front of you. Uh, if you have any questions, I know Victor is here to uh, answer those. <laughs> No, um, no questions. I will say that uh, I think it is uh, really advantageous uh, that the money is there and uh, we can borrow this as we need it. Don't have to borrow the whole thing up front and pay interest on it. So uh, we can kind of pay as we go and you'll pay less interest that way. Absolutely. So we feel good about that. Our, uh, our financial advisor, Piper Jaffrey, um, uh, very good about the rate and the terms, and uh, so no other questions. Uh, item number 10 is the final payment for the Hopper Road Box Culver project. Number 11 is the final payment for the 2018 sidewalk cap program. Uh, the new ordinance are, are there any consent denied you'd like to have removed or further? Not uh, our new ordinances. Number 12 is for calling of the election for the TTF uh, 6. This will be 
uh, for a five-year extension as we discussed last time. And the last time we kind of talked, most of the projects are the ones that were recommended by the, the council, but we're not finalizing that project list until we have a little more information regarding the grant program uh, to decide between uh, the TPF project and, or excuse me, the, the VMD project and the um, Sprint project. So that will be a decision that will be after we get uh, the answer from that uh, grant application. This is the first reading of calling that election, the five-year extension. Uh, number 13 is a record plat at Summers Castle Rock subdivision. This takes three lots and uh, turns into one. Number 14 is a Sleepy Hollow subdivision. This takes one lot and splits it in two. Uh, number 15 is from the public hearing for the substation. 16 is a public hearing from the rezoning. And uh, number 17 is a, a repeals ordinance number 4972. And, uh, and this is from our downtown TIF uh, district. Uh, the RPA 2 is the section of that that act was activated by that ordinance. This dissolves that and thus restores 23 a year uh, benefit uh, time frame for that uh, uh, RPA 2. Um, that, that's a project that just got an agreement with them. I had certain amount of time to deliver that agreement. They had some things happen to out of control and we're going to do it so it uh, puts us back to square one. Further questions on new ordinances? If not, we've got the appointment of the River Campus um, Board of Managers and uh, appointment of the Show Me Center Board of Managers. Um, that Show Me Center Board of Managers is the city manager's uh, slot that's reserved for city manager. And the River Campus, I think I've gotten almost everybody's uh, we will tally those for you for later consideration. Mayor, that's all. Okay. That's the case. I will call this meeting the regular meeting of the council to order. And roll call. Here. Bob Buck. Here. Robert Gard. Here. Stacy Kinder. Here. Shelley Moore. Here. Ann Preston. Here. Nate Thomas. Here. Looks like everybody's here. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Ryan. Second by Dan. Any discussion? Not all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. We have two public hearings this evening. A public hearing to consider a request for a special use permit for purposes of constructing, maintaining, and operating an electrical power distribution substation at 1400 West Cape Rock Drive. Anybody here this evening to speak on behalf of the public hearing? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Russell Berger with Amber, Missouri. I want to thank you, Mayor Fox and City Manager Scott Meyer and the rest of the council for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of Amber, Missouri this evening. And you said it a while ago, the holidays are upon us. I just want to thank the opportunity to wish everybody in this room a happy upcoming holiday season. Um, Cape Rock, uh, we, we uh, request your approval to construct a substation there at that location. It's needed. Uh, the, adding the smart grid technology to the substation will improve reliability for the area and will allow us to serve any future development in that area. Um, and also uh, future capacity it will allow us to increase our capacity for the, by adding a new substation. That's all I have. Any question? Uh, just out of curiosity, what's the footprint of that substation? So, 76 by 88. I'm sorry. It's roughly 80 by 90. 80 by 90. Okay. Good question. How long has Amarant known that parcel? Since 2008. 2008. And you just feel like at this point you want to be ready for more 
infrastructure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the loads growing out in that area, and for us to, to serve that area well, we just need future uh, work capacity to do so. As part of projects like this, do you usually uh, do any sort of landscaping or anything to just kind of dress it up a little bit for maybe the surrounding homeowners or property owners? We do, and I think, uh, Tony, do you have a, a rendering? I do. Can this off to someone else? I don't know if everyone wants to see one. So it's pretty low profile. substation is that over the past uh, five to ten years there's been uh, development, new neighborhoods, apartment buildings, uh, new university housing, and some businesses. And as Mr. Berger said, uh, we're uh, planning for future development. Uh, the other thing that we did was we held a public uh, community meeting to take some of the uh, feedback from the community and we've made a, a couple of changes to our design for that. Um, and then the last thing that I want to say is that uh, this new substation will be taking customer load from two other existing substations, and it'll, it'll improve the reliability of the, of the local station, but it'll also, by reducing the load of the other two, it'll improve the reliability of those as well. That's all I have. Previously mentioned, this is uh, upgrading a smart grid or whatever. Is that so, is that something you anticipate doing uh, at all of your substations here? Uh, and is there a plan for how long that might be? <coughs> there, there, there is a plan for that. Um, one of the other two substations, we're, we're planning to modernize that one as well. Um, that's uh, in the five-year plan. Okay. Uh, we'll have a on that one. Thanks. Any other questions? All right, thank you, John. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else this evening appear for the council about this public hearing? Mayor, the only thing that I would add is that after talking with Amron, obviously this is in our ward. Uh, this is part of my neighborhood. Um, I understand that this isn't ideal for, for the neighborhood, um, but it's something that from an infrastructure standpoint is, is very important to do. Um, I do think with look, with talking with um, with Amron, I do think some of the drainage issues that they've had coming off the back of this property, going to the Heritage Park condominiums, I do think some of that will be alleviated. Um, and I do think with the, the proposal they've got, um, is is it is the best uh, the best of the situation? So um, I support the project. Good. Else? If not, I will close this public hearing. We also have a public hearing to consider a request for these on property at 1205 South Mountain Road from M1 Light Manufacturing Industrial to R4 medium density multifamily residential district. Anybody here this evening to speak on behalf of this public hearing? Hello. Hi. My name is Shamil Armour. 
I am owner of the development, and this development is for um, assisted living and memory care community. It will be a resort style retirement senior living community with services for assisted living and people diagnosed with memory care, dementia, and Alzheimer's disease. Um, the building will be approximately 75,000 square feet, three story. Um, we do have um, a lot of state-of-the-art programs in line, um, help with specialists on dementia care involved in setting up and developing the programs as well. So um, I also have with me tonight Nick Walker from Impact if you have specific questions regarding the construction. But um, I appreciate your support and I hope you approve on the rezoning of this property. Okay, thank you. Um, we had <coughs> well, one of the people who was concerned at the uh, plan zoning and called was about uh, um, concern with the radio station about their microwave connections. I don't know if you got a chance to talk with them about uh, maintaining that connection or not. Sure, yes. Um, and just uh, recently, I talked again to Mr. Lambert. Uh -huh. um, he had a concern with us. And um, Nick as well talked to an architect that we're going to be working with. And there are three, um, as I understand, receivers and two of them are at a much higher elevation and we don't see a problem with that. One is at a much lower elevation and so I called Mr. Lambert and told him um, that that one might become a problem and I asked him if he could look into the cost of raising it and um, he just has not been able to get back with me on that yet. But we're hoping to work together yeah. on that issue. Thank you. Thank you. So let me ask you this question. The height of the uh, lower receiver that he has, would it still be affected if zoning did not change? Um, it would be, it would not be affected. I mean, it wouldn't make a difference because the elevation, I believe it's a 15, Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Nick Walker with Impact Strategies, 401 South 18th Street, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, so current zoning as it is in the light industrial, you could build up to 40 feet, right. which could affect that lower. So if it stayed the same, it still might affect its property. Yes, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else on this public hearing about rezoning? If not, I will close this public hearing. Are there anybody, uh, any other appearances this evening for any item that's on the agenda? Or any other items on the agenda this evening? If not, we will move to consent agenda. Eric? Okay. Number 19, dash 180. Ordinance by President to the Manager of Executive Agreement with the County of Cape Florida with the Clerk of the County Commission and the County Collector for Tax Collection Services on the City of Cape Florida, Missouri. An ordinance by President to the Manager of Executive Agreement with the County of Cape Florida with the Clerk of the County Commission and the County Collector for Tax Collection Services on the City of Cape Florida, Missouri. 19-181, an ordinance for the of Great Glenwood Subdivision, or an improvement of the Great Glenwood Subdivision, Bill 19-182, an ordinance for the Rector of the West Broadway Property Subdivision, or an improvement of the West Broadway Property Subdivision, or 19-183, an ordinance approving the Rector of the Block and Fifth Subdivision, or an improvement of the Rector of the Block and Fifth Subdivision, or 19-184, an ordinance approving the Rector of the King's Highway Subdivision, or an improvement of the Rector of the King's Highway Subdivision, until the 19-186 resolution approving a proposal from Regents Capital Advantage to purchase special obligation bond series 2020 of the city of Cape Verde, Missouri and authorizing certain matters relating there to. You had before you the consent agenda. Sir Borshman. So moved. Motion by Mr. Clark, second by Dan. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. That motion carried. New ordinances. Bill number 19-187. An ordinance amending chapter 15 of the city code by extending the one half to one cent 
1% transportation sales tax and reestablishing the city transportation trust fund and calling an election the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, on the question of whether to approve the sales tax extension. Designating the time of holding the election, authorizing and directing the city clerk to give notice of the election. So moved. Motion by Ryan. Second. Second by Nate. Any discussion? Yeah. Um, just out, out of curiosity, do we have any update on just thinking forward to when we might be discussing where we're at on projects? Um, do we have any indication where the governor's office is at on uh, grant funding requests? Uh, we've received online. some inquiries <coughs> about more details of, of the projects, but I have not received anything different than we've received before that they've participated in uh, approval in late December or January. I don't think any staff has received anything different. Anticipating making decisions. No. Right. No. Not approval of ours necessarily, no, but no, just yeah. on the brain. Our main concern was to get this passed sure. so we know that it's going to be on the ballot in April. Okay. Uh, we can, we've got plenty of time between even January, February to talk about projects for the April election. So, and those will be specific, yes, to the, to the community. I mean, they have been in the past, and I think that's yeah. why we need to keep yeah. that up. So, yes. Uh, we've been pretty diligent about doing what we say we're going to do, and it just so happens that a lot of them take a lot longer because we have to collect the money before we actually do it. So, I uh, mean, it's a very efficient way to do it, and I cracked the way for the tax break. Okay, any other discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-188, and the four ordinance approving the record title of Summers and Castle Rock Subdivision. So moved. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Robbie. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-189, an ordinance approving the record title of Sleepy Hall Subdivision. So moved. Second by Dan, second by Ryan. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-190. An ordinance of granting a special use permit to the Union Electric Company, DBA, Amherst, Missouri, for purposes of constructing, maintaining, and operating an electrical power distribution substation at 1400 West Cape Rock Drive in the city and county of Cape Drive, Missouri. So Motion by Ryan. Second. Second by Dan. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-191. An ordinance of amending chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances in the City of Cape Cod, Missouri by changing the zoning of property located at 1205 South and Allen Road in the City and County of Cape Cod, Missouri from M1 to R4. So moved. Second. Motion by Dan, second by Ryan. Before we, we I just want to say something. Uh, Cape Girardeau was a fantastic, sorry. Cape Girardeau was a fantastic community for people to travel to for health care, to look at for uh, elder care, for memory care, all this stuff. And so having an additional facility in the city of Cape Girardeau is fantastic for uh, incredible jobs, great uh, bringing in population and adding great services to our existing services. So. Uh, I just think this is a cool project. Anybody else? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill 19-192, an, an ordinance repealing ordinance number 4972 and dissolving the downtown Cape Girardeau RPA2 special allocation fund. So moved. Motion by Dan. Sorry. Same by me. Well, this is another one I want to uh, ask a question about. So by repealing this, this does, in the future we can go back and, and grant the TIF, TIF for this same structure. Yeah, we can reactivate this area. Yes. Okay. Now we we'll just start the clock over again. Just start back at the 23 years? Yep. Start. Okay. 
you know, whenever you approach downtown Cape Girardeau from the south, you're driving up, you go past, you know, RP and furniture, and you look at, you see, you see one main, you know, and, and, the, and whenever I saw this was coming up, it just kind of, my heart sunk, because I thought, man, this is a sentinel project for the city of Cape Girardeau. This is that really fantastic option we've got for, uh, for welcoming community citizens into the community, bringing them into our downtown, and to see that this TIF funding was being removed. Uh, just made my heart sick. You know, I, I think that we all would like to see a thriving downtown, and we'd like to see projects like this continue. This building currently has got a large tree growing out of the roof, and so I'd like to see it kind of move closer and not further away from renovation. So hopefully, soon, we'll, we'll see this again. I hope somebody else, project. some other developer, will pick up this project and uh, do something with it. Downtown's on the rise. And yeah, it's a lot of square footage a that square a, footage. a good developer could come into and, and take the tree out of the roof and start working with it to get it back to where it needs to be. That's true. It really bothers me that there's a tree growing out. <laughs> I, I caught on to that. Yeah. <laughs> What's the address of that? One Main one, Street. One, one, it's the old River Nicks or uh, Woolworths. Is that, is that it's it's right at the corner. It runs yeah. the whole block all the way through the Spanish yeah. Street. Yeah. That build that particular building down. Yeah. So it's a big Story. footprint. Yeah. That's two. Two story, right? Yeah, yeah it's two yeah. story. It's, it's, it's a big building. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's actually two story or three story. And it might be three. Yeah, it might be three story. I think it is yeah, it's either two or three. I think there's some pretty fantastic views from the second floor. <laughs> Come on, developers. He's on Come the on in there. From the bus yeah. that are up there. <laughs> yeah. We're on the corner. Yeah. You Actually, there are two buildings there. There's one North Main and three North, or five North Main. I think, is it five, five and one? one. Mm -hmm. So all, all totaled, it's a large amount of square footage, and it goes straight from Main to Spanish. It, the, both buildings run the entire length of the block. You might be thinking about the building. No, 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 if not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we have two appointments this evening. Uh, the first to the appointments of the River Campus Board of Managers is Danielle Pointer. I'll entertain a motion as such. So Second. Move. Second. Motion by Bobby, second by Ryan. Uh, any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, we also need to reappoint uh, Mr. Meyer to the Show Me Center Board of Managers. So moved. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Robbie. Any discussion? <laughs> no, it's, I was gonna, is there going to be an opening for another spot on that soon? There, there is, but it's a university appointment. Right. Oh, okay. There are six people on the board, three of them appointed by the city and three of them appointed by the university. Oh. Right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Looks like you got it again, Scott. We have no closed session this evening. Make a motion to adjourn, Mayor. Second. Motion made to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. And we are adjourned.